Your return is much appreciated by the CoinSuries channel. Request from viewer is, what do you think will happen next? You can also comment your opinion. Thank you to all the subscribers of our CoinSuries. Who came to our channel CoinSuries? You will always be info with the latest CoinSuries news. Option 1, will there be a settlement of XRP and XRP? Option 2, or XRP will win. Option 3, or SEC will win. Please like my video and subscribe my channel. The cryptocurrency market as a whole had a quite flat day, but that wasn't enough to prevent XRP from sliding 4.6% on the day, reaching 51 cents precisely. I hope everything is okay with you. Since the Bitcoin ETF passed, the market has been quite volatile, if the current trend continues, XRP might easily reclaim its $30 to $40 range from its previous highs. And I wouldn't be surprised at all to see that again. Aside from that, Bitcoin is down 42,800 Ethereum, or slightly less than 1%. The current recording shows a $2,343 increase. That's an increase of nearly 1%. Hello, Eleanor Turat. Reportedly, the SEC filed a brief in the debt box case today. That was the one where the SEC cautioned against debt boxes trying to transfer funds overseas, in case you missed it. The regulatory body will surely win in court. For what reason are they allowed to lie? Debt box had no intention of laundering or exporting monies, and the SEC had presented no evidence that the whole thing had been staged. Furthermore, the courts had already blocked the company's funds. You can imagine the mayhem that would follow if someone's bank accounts were frozen, since it would make even their daily lives more difficult. That's an extremely severe course of action. Eleanor Turok claims that the SEC has opted to drop the charges rather than face fines for misleading the court to get a restraining order and asset freeze against that person. First of all, they should still face repercussions for wrongdoing, not be able to dodge penalty simply because they abandoned the lawsuit. Many men hold the view that this is what will happen in the end. He speaks highly of what follows. This is really unprecedented. After more than three decades of defending people against the SEC, I believe that the SEC attorneys who participated in the court-mandated deceit may face consequences due to this voluntary departure. In a word, yes. Take this scenario into consideration, they sue you, claiming that you're breaking all these laws. The SEC, in contrast, is the one breaking the law, they seem to think that dropping the case would fix everything. Quite disgusting behavior exhibited by Gary Gensler. The established procedure there is hierarchical and decentralized. John Deaton and Gary Gensler have stated that your leadership, or lack thereof, is directly responsible for this crisis. In this regard, it seems that his views are congruent with mine. According to a federal court, first-year lawyers are hypocrites who don't really respect the law. The future of Ripple, a major US-based fintech and cryptocurrency business, was put at risk after they lost a landmark litigation that lasted for a century, costing $200 million and hurting XRP investors. Above all, the judge is reprimanding them. The immediate denial of your Bitcoin ETF application by the lower court was deemed arbitrary and capricious by an appeals court. Regardless of those remarkable results, results that would make any attorney or leader blush in shame, it was the grayscale case in which they naturally failed miserably. Reality continues to elude your agency's legal staff. In terms of equity, you run away in fear for your dishonest lawyer's safety as they prepare to face the law they swore to defend. This is the kind of situation where we should put our faith in the SEC and other regulatory agencies in my opinion, because we can only assume that they have our best interests at heart. When it becomes clear that a judge is not up to par, we should all face harsher penalties if we were to stand before one like that in court. There would be far more serious repercussions from the SEC if we did this, my friend. Additionally, I am curious as to whether or not anyone would face consequences. They are terrifying everyone. When you sue someone, you'll have to shell out a ton of cash for court costs and damages. No money will be spent on this legal matter. The judges put in a lot of work, pretending they don't have the right kind of legal training for these kinds of cases, while the SEC side solicitors make excellent incomes. 
Someone needs to make them pay for what they did. Say who you are. Just give me a clue. I received this announcement through Twitter. You recall that about two weeks ago, PayPal CEO made a statement? While getting ready to shock the world, we're all sitting here asking, what is it, together? Could you two maybe go into business together now that X is getting into payments? Is something taking place there? Would you mind describing it to me? Ended up being absolutely nothing and then today, it was discovered that PayPal terminated 9% of its workers. Roughly 2,000 employees feel that Gary Gensler should go after this kind of activity. I get that you're trying to increase the value of your stock by making it seem like something big is about to happen, but the truth is that only 9% of your employees are on board. It's not exciting, shocking, or wonderful news in the least. An upswing is starting to show up, which is something we've talked about previously on the channel. Keep an eye on your finances as time goes by. That, in my view, will occur more frequently. If you're interested, you can watch the video I did yesterday that goes into more information on the topic here. Now, today, Standard Charter announced that they anticipate the authorization of the Ethereum spot ETF in May. It explains why we think it might, for people who haven't watched it yet. Still, things are starting to come together here. Also, the same people are to blame for it. BlackRock is aiming to bring their immune TF into the bigger crypto market as a stepping stone. When it comes to this matter, the SEC seems weak and uninformed. Massive investment firm BlackRock sees cryptocurrency as a promising new market and has decided to jump in with both feet. It will be interesting to see how this plays out, especially since the SEC can't stop them. The only guaranteed way to know is to wait for its approval and announcement, much like with the Bitcoin ETF. But I think that might be a big one, because we're into the post-havening era, when the market is supposed to start improving. If that were to happen, it would be great news for the Bitcoin industry overall. This is just a stepping stone on the road to mainstream banking accepting crypto assets, so keep that in mind. Naturally, not all tokens will be available for trading on exchanges. Nonetheless, most people will have no trouble doing so via their individual exchange-traded funds or other debundled products. I am currently listening to Lynn Alden, who is, in my opinion, among the top crypto and Bitcoin analysts currently active. On top of that, she thought Bitcoin ETF was the dullest part. Additionally, crypto goes against what most people think. She still doesn't believe the ETF launch will cause a massive bull run, but she does agree that the market for cryptocurrencies will see a massive influx of capital over the next several years, driving up prices dramatically. Consequently, the cryptocurrency market as a whole isn't experiencing a meteoric rise to 100,000 at the moment. But it does lay the groundwork for exponential growth in the future. She has my utmost backing. This asset type has advanced significantly relative to other asset classes. Neither is it either slash or at the moment, most people, you know, in the run-up to that event, don't see it as being on Donkey Kong. This was the point she was attempting to make. The alternative would have been to go parabolic, which would have meant that the next day we would hit 100,000. On the other hand, after the ETF, everyone was going to sell. Additionally, the anticipated massive sell-off never happened. Just so you know, that is pretty much the crux of it. Consider trade tumultuous trading. In most cases, the choice with the fewest boats ends up being the best, regardless of whether it was option C out of the original three. If everyone goes with choices A and B, this will occur. The next move by the Federal Reserve is unclear. Will interest rates be put back into effect? Everyone knows the Fed will have to lower rates at some point, the question is when exactly they will start. The general consensus appears to be that it is not urgent to do so, since it will not have any noticeable detrimental effect on the economy. They are also concerned that if they start things rolling with too much excitement, it will cause prices to jump and cash to flood in, which would put them right back where they started. They intend to make the most of their advancement. The Federal Reserve, in my view, was excessively hesitant to initiate tightening, and I will explain why. Permit the situation to worsen. They must start loosening limitations right away or risk making the same mistake again. Whether other people point out glaring problems, it doesn't affect me. Everywhere you look, 
problems arise. The move by PayPal to lay off 9% of its staff today demonstrated that there are cracks in the system that are on the verge of bursting. Plus, we're in for a huge setback if they dally, and you won't be able to bounce back fast. They should start by taking the boot off everyone's neck, but I think it will take them until they reach 4 before they start to relax. Something will break if you don't have a couple amounts. During the bull run, didn't everyone say that the metaverse was the next big thing? Problematically, it appears that many people are beginning to lose interest in this idea. Its importance is immeasurable. This is completely absurd. In many respects, the recently introduced Apple Vision headset comes seem as an extremely fake product. It is not yet ready, it needs some last touches. Wearing such a heavy and bulky item on one's head can lead to discomfort in the neck. Everything remains the same, including this huge battery you're toting around. It is obviously not the end product. Their behavior is perplexing. So long as they wait to fine-tune that item, why don't they? They are unable to do so at this time. If you ask me, the metaverse, blockchain AI, and Web3 are the foundations of the future. Plus, they know they have to step foot in this area. Whether or whether the product is complete, they must seize this market share. You should never let the metaverse go to sleep, it will inevitably awaken at the last possible moment. The company's most recent move makes that case, in my opinion. The countdown to the vote on the AMM amendment is currently at 26, according to his fascinating post on Twitter today. Only three more to go. We're going to make it, everyone. First and foremost, this is an essential characteristic that other blockchains have, but the XRP ledger does not yet have. Therefore, it is imperative that this occurs. I think the second point is really important when it comes to the liquidity of the XRP chain. That will be much aided by this. Because a DEX sale typically does not provide a great degree of liquidity, if Jed McCaleb wasn't dumping millions of coins at it, he had to have known someone on the other side wanted to buy them. However, I believe that will have a significantly greater impact on chain activity for the XRP ledger. By integrating this with exciting new assets, such as large stable coins, and building bridges, we can increase the likelihood that projects built on the XRP ledger, such as their coin trading, will be successful. If all goes according to plan, this could become one of the world's largest hubs of liquidity on the XRP ledger. Is this hecky anything I plan to use? Sure, that's my plan. It isn't, however, the cause of my elation. Once this feature is accessible, I think developers will implement it at an exponential rate, and the potential for amazing things to be produced is immense. All we need to secure once more are stable currencies, interesting assets, and useful applications. This is a huge step forward in my opinion. Because it fixes a problem with their on-demand service, Ripple will also reap the benefits of this. These exchanges will levy a liquidity fee if you turn your XRP into fiat money like dollars, yen, or any other. Plus, if we can do it all on-chain, it will be almost free. There is an instant impact. Very rapidly. I have faith that they can build a more robust system with more unchained data, pathfinding algorithms, ripples, and payment methods to make it work. I will hold off on announcing its green light just like I did with the Bitcoin ETF but, this one is significant. It lays the groundwork, which is critical, and I'm eagerly anticipating its completion because XRP is going to surge. Oh, I get it. Let me tell you the key topic, since we are almost there and these validators painstakingly reviewed all the data to make sure we are launch ready, it appears like Ripple did a fantastic job spreading everything out. We are completing all of the necessary tasks. The next article, Drama at Solana, delves into the topic of decentralized theater, which is sparked by the foundation of a new corporate business. That is why we should never stop wondering whether blockchains are truly decentralized. In the midst of a reorganization, some 45 workers have left Solana Labs, one of two legal organizations associated with blockchain technology. These people are going to be a part of a new company called AdsUp, and they're going to help with things like further application and product development, maintaining and improving the blockchain infrastructure, and decentralizing the Solana ecosystem. We are now in a position to launch our own financially independent business. 
A new corporation will be formed to separate their commercial operations. Solana Labs officials denied any attempt at deceit and said the spin-off was an integral element of their plan when questioned whether it had anything to do with the heightened judicial examination of blockchain over the last year. I think it's a mix of the two, on the one side, it's beneficial for the blockchain as a whole, but on the other, they're probably attempting to evade regulator scrutiny, which is particularly true for a big blockchain like Solana. Anytime we talk about blockchains, this must be considered. It makes no difference where we are right now. When I go back on the days of XRP, Ledger, and Ripple, I see that everything was working smoothly. Also, I think we are talking about ways to strengthen governance and other things, and it's going well. When we get there, the XRP Ledger will be far better, in my view. Looking back at the Bitcoin network's history, we see that mining happened only in China and Mongolia. At this very second, that is not correct. Mining became far less concentrated and spread all across the globe, as we have seen. You may be aware that Ethereum has made several major revisions to its blockchain architecture. Everything is subject to change in the future. Therefore, we are not aiming for perfection. We have pondered ways to improve processes and are looking for direction. You shouldn't be worried, Stefan Thomas. I remember getting back into Bitcoin mining when it was really popular in China. It seems like decentralization is the way to go for top-notch blockchain technology in the future, but whether or not this is always the case is an open question. I get the impression that this is just the start, though, Medallic but Aaron cautions developers to use caution when merging crypto with AI. My buddy Rohan is right when he says that blockchain technology is AI's bedrock. The Ethereum co-founder is becoming more open to the idea of AI and cryptocurrencies interacting, but he warns developers to be careful. The popularity of crypto has been declining because to AI. As you shall see, the Bitcoin market is about to go boom. People will stop caring about AI once it starts roaring up. You probably aren't thinking about the metaverse. Every detail is important. With each step, you get closer to the next chapter. In the future, you must not let any of these important societal and financial pillars fall into disrepair. While Metaverse looks to be moving its emphasis towards massive language models and applications like ChatGPT, Silicon Valley appears to be fascinated on Web3, and several blockchain ventures have tried to cash in on the current AI frenzy. You see, the real action is happening at the crossroads of blockchain and AI. If you want to know more about this topic, Two great people to read are Jerry Hall and Nick Black. Unfortunately, you need exercise caution, as there have been instances of fraudulent initiatives trying to cash in on the AI-sounding titles of their tokens. This reminds me of the dot-com boom of the early internet, when similar tactics were used. Having said that, it does happen frequently. That being said, you should also be aware that investing in crypto AI businesses might potentially yield enormous returns. On top of that, they are two great resources, while he did not rule out the possibility of future challenges, but Aaron did offer his thoughts on where crypto and AI technology can intersect using the metaphor of a game. He identified four categories of potential AI blockchain interactions, with AI playing an important role in the most promising categories. Quite high. Applications that rely on human inputs to generate incentives fall into this category. The use of AI to forecast market movements is one area where this technology has demonstrated potential. An AI or operator's payment for predictions can be standardized using a blockchain-based approach. Anyway, he covers a lot of ground, read it if you're curious. Just to clarify, blockchain isn't meant to replace AI. There's a lot of new stuff popping out, and we're just trying to keep up. Leave your opinions in the comments section. Subscribing and like is always appreciated. As for now, farewell.